So the title uh, is Unexplained uh, Infertility. Uh, Okay. Thank you. So the title is Unexplained Infertility. And by definition, uh, the, the instance of unexplained infertility is about 30% of infertile couples. It varies, of course, with age and with uh, the, the location. And it is defined as the lack of an obvious cause for uh, infertility for uh, 12 months if the couple, if the female is less than 35 years and for six months if she is more than 35 years. How to reach a diagnosis of unexplained infertility according to Ashri? Only doing three tests, semen analysis, assessment of ovulation and assessment of tubal patency if the three are normal, then the diagnosis is unexplained infertility. And I think concerning this, ultrasound also is important. So ultrasound should be added as a fourth test to diagnose unexplained infertility. Other tests like ovarian reserve tests should not be performed routinely. Postcoital tests does not have a meaning and endometrial biopsy should not be performed as a part of routine investigations of infertile couples and then the very uh, controversial point which is laparoscopy and the committee opinion of the fertility and sterility indicated that laparoscopy should not be performed in the evaluation of infertile female but may be warranted only if you have high index of suspicion that something is wrong in the pelvis. To this end, despite this, if you take couples with unexplained infertility and you do laparoscopies, you can have abnormal findings in about 83% of couple of patients. 70% will be endometriosis, 50% will be adhesions and 20% will be a tubal factor. And also there are studies indicating that after laparoscopy for adhesions or endometriosis or tubal factor, the pregnancy rate will increase uh, during the first uh, 16 months after laparoscopy. So, uh, these are controversial data. Uh, semen is okay, hysterosalpingography or saline infusion is okay, uh, progesterone is okay, but uh, laparoscopy is very controversial. And although there are no guidelines to indicate that laparoscopy should be done for cases with unexplained infertility, there are intervention data that would say that uh, laparoscopy could increase the pregnancy rate in. Uh, women with unexplained infertility past three years after the laparoscopy. As we've stated that the, 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 the indication for uh, uh, diagnosing a couple with unexplained infertility is one year uh, of marriage. The question comes, is one year a solid cutoff? So in fact, if you take couples with unexplained infertility, you will find that after 12 months of unsuccessful attempts, 50% will conceive in the following year and another 12% in the second year. So one year is not a magic word because if those couples stay for two years, the 50% will get spontaneous pregnancy. And if for three years, the data will, increase, uh, will indicate that from 60 to 80% would get pregnancy doing nothing, doing nothing. And this is very important. Then the third important question, is it truly, is it truly unexplained? Is this truly unexplained infertility? And the answer of course is no, because there are some patients with genetic factors, some patients with 
ovarian or testicular dysfunctions. Some patients, as you've indicated in previous presentation, with sperm and oocyte problems. Some patients with fallopian tube problems. Some patients, as Professor Mormon indicated or Professor Bedewi indicated, with endometrial problems, either, either from organic lesions like fibroid or from dysfunction of the endometrium, as Professor Mormon indicated. And implantation failure also, endometriosis, and the big issue, the big issue is the immunology. So immunology constitute the dark room, the area that is not exactly known in unexplained infertility. You may have autoimmune thyroiditis, antiphospholipid syndrome, systemic lupus, vascularity, uh, vasculitis secondary to diabetes, uh, anti-nuclear antibodies. All these are factors that could be present and related to infertility. But they are not essential requirements for diagnosis of unexplained infertility. Unexplained infertility is diagnosed by semen analysis, uh, hysterosalpingography or saline infusion, uh, serum progesterone and ultrasound. You don't need these tests to diagnose unexplained infertility, but they are, of course, definitely causes for uh, unexplained infertility in different populations. So I have this first case. She is 31 years. She is married since 2.4 years. Her BMI is uh, 25. She has regular cycles, midluteal progesterone, 8 nanogram per ml. She did saline infusion sonography, which showed that at least one tube was patent and uterine cavity is sonographically normal. The anterior follicle count was 15. The sperm count is normal and past history of four chromatin separate cycles and two IOI cycles in one clinic. She was counseled about her chances of spontaneous pregnancy, despite having 2.5 years of uh, infertility. And she took non-specific uh, treatment just for uh, reassurance. And she had spontaneous pregnancy uh, after six weeks. So even after 2.5 years of infertility and failure of non-pensitrate and IOI cycles, spontaneous pregnancy can still occur in patients with unexplained infertility. And this rate of spontaneous pregnancy is 13 to 15% during the first year of attempt, which increases to 35% during the next two years of attempt. And moreover, the rate could reach in some women who are young and having a good fertility profile, the spontaneous pregnancy rate can reach 80% following three years of unprotected intercourse. So even on the third year in young couples, there is a high chance that pregnancy can still occur spontaneously. And the rate of spontaneous pregnancy, of course, will drastically decline after the third year. So after three years of un uh, uh, unexplained infertility, the rate of spontaneous pregnancy will definitely decrease even in women uh, younger than 30 years. So the management of infertile couples with idiopathic subfertility needs individualized treatment. And this individualized treatment has several keys or several variables. For example, age. Uh, in, in older age, you will go on the fast track. You don't do a lot of trials before doing ICSI. You go for ICSI if there is a chance for uh, good success in ICSI. The infertility history. The infertility history, if she's second in infertility, she has better chances than uh, primary infertility. If she has uh, two cycles or three cycles of her eye, she should not repeat this again. Uh, the treatment history, if she has been treated with trombinsetrate or with retrosol or with gonadotropines, the cost of the treatment, an expensive treatment that has a lot of number to treat before you have a pregnancy is not a good uh, treatment, even if it is evidence-based treatment. And the risks of that treatment, because for example, you will see that nice guidelines removed totally 
IOI because of the risk of multiple pregnancy with IOI. So this patient is 28 years. She is married for three years. Her BMI is 26. She's ovulatory with patent tubes, this time with hysterosalpingography. Sperm count is normal and the motility is normal and the morphology is normal. She visited five clinics last 11 months. She's tense, she's worried. Clinic one, she did four cycles of citrate and HMG. Clinic two, she did PRP in two cycles, 14 endometrium with citrate. And in clinic three and four, they offered her laparoscopy and hysteroscopy, but the patient refused. And clinic five offered ICSI, which she refused for economic reasons. She got pregnant on letrozole plus FSH. So despite the passage of three years and despite the several treatment uh, history that she had, still she can get pregnant with uh, a simple treatment like uh, uh, letrozole and FSH. Another patient, 28 years, married for three years, BMI 26, ovulatory with patent tube by hysterosalpingography. Uh, she was given, despite the passage of three years, litrozole, one tablet per day from day three to seven, and FSH uh, from day five onwards. And on day nine, right follicle 17, endometrium is five, triple but five. On day 11, right follicle is 20, endometrium still thin but triple. So despite the fact that the follicle was 20, we waited till the follicle became 25 and the endometrium became triple and nine. It's she was given and she got pregnant. The message is that despite the passage of three years and several treatments, still you can use simple procedures. And the second message is that each protocol has a specific management. Each protocol has a specific management. So overtreatment in most cases is mainly related to misdiagnosis and undiagnosis of eligible cases for expected management. You do, you do an overtreatment, expensive treatment, because we missed diagnose who are the patients who are favorable for expectant management. So who are they? So the patients who are uh, eligible for expectant management are women under 30 years, women with short infertility duration, women uh, with simple past history of infertility treatment without aggressive uh, measures, and he, uh, women who do not have a history suggestive of other causes of uh, infertility, like uh, a lot of infection or previous pelvic surgery, etc. So the NICE guidelines in 2004, it is stated that expected management for two years is the best choice when the age is less than 30. So this is the first uh, guideline according to NICE 2004. Uh, and, and what we mean by expected management, this means active medical intervention, which requires that she will be aware of her ovulation time and the best period of unprotected intercourse. So she has to learn something about her physiology. And the main advantage in, in uh, those who put the guideline is that expected management is associated with little incidence of multiple gestations with its known complications. So this is the first guideline in uh, NICE guidelines 2004. If the long period of expected management cannot lead to pregnancy, Ovulation induction by clonfin citrate and letrozole is not effective for those couples. So according to NICE guidelines, uh, 2004, if expectant management did not lead to pregnancy, uh, ovulation induction by clonfin citrate and letrozole alone are not a good uh, idea, according to guidelines. And as you've seen from uh, our case presentations, they were used either with uh, clonfinsetrate with HMG or letrozole with HMG in patients who got pregnant uh, after three years of expectant management. 
according also to NICE guidelines 2004, uh, insemination cycle without ovarian stimulations will have little benefit. And this is a major difference between NICE guideline 2004 and NICE guideline 2014. So in, in NICE guidelines 2004, they still uh, chose insemination as a treatment of unexplained infertility, but they suggested that insemination should be coupled to stimulation. Uh, stimulation cycles in RI, three to four cycles, are effective in women under the age 35. This is nice, 2004. But uh, they indicated that COHIOI increases the risk of multiple pregnancy and that it is not effective in uh, couples with long duration of infertility. The major shift in the guidelines was in the NICE guidelines 2013, where they recommended expectant treatment for up to two years, and then if unsuccessful, just go to IVF directly. They ruled out the possibility of using intrauterine insemination as a possible intermediate treatment for couples with unexplained infertility. So this is the major difference between NICE 2013 and NICE 2004, that they eliminated uh, IOI from the pathway of treating uh, unexplained infertility. And this created a, a, a huge battle between specialists and uh, then came also uh, uh, this uh, systematic review and meta-analysis that indicated that there is no difference actually between IOI and timed intercourse in patients with uh, uh, unexplained infertility, whether you're using uh, COH or not using COH. And also the experience of a lot of us in this, uh, in this session. Uh, so, uh, there are indications that IOI is not better than time intercourse, and there are some uh, respectable bodies uh, that establish guidelines that do not uh, uh, confirm that IOI should be a, a treatment option in the pathway of unexplained infertility. And if you come to the question uh, of whether to use uh, clonfin citrate or uh, letrozole with HMG in the treatment of uh, unexplained infertility, meta-analyses show that they are the same, whether you use clonfin citrate or uh, uh, letrozole with HMG, but not alone because we indicated before that alone they are not a good option for unexplained infertility. So couples over 35 and couples with long duration of fertility are suitable candidates for IVF. And because of the risk of fertilization failure of IVF, then you should uh, split uh, in patients with unexplained infertility, the oocytes between IVF and ICSI, which is a good idea uh, rather than uh, using IVF alone, which could lead to fertilization failure because in unexplained infertility, we don't know exactly what is the cause of uh, the infertility. Uh, this story extends more in women with old age. With, in women with old age, IVF seems better option than IOI, as it is clear in the fourth T trial, uh, which uh, was published in 2014, to compare treatment initiated after two cycles of IOI, uh, of two cycles of IOI to IVF in older women with unexplained infertility. And this uh, uh, 40 uh, trial demonstrated that the pregnancy rate uh, with IVF is uh, better than the pregnancy rate and, and quicker than the pregnancy rate with IOI in older women. But we have to remember that uh, in older women, there are a group that will not respond properly to ICSI and they are not good candidate for ICSI, so we have to be careful in this group 
like for example, Poseidon 4. So if you think that this group is a poor candidate of ICSI, you should not run always to ICSI because cost-benefit analysis is important and it is questionable that IVF in poor responders, uh, according to Bronia criteria, is an effective treatment or not. So uh, this patient is 38 years with unexplained, unexplained infertility, one year. She had two cycles of IOI and HMG. Uh, in the second cycle, she got pregnant with three sacs with uh, cardiac tube pulsation. She was reduced to an ongoing pregnancy to 24 weeks. So despite the fact that she's 38, she didn't do IVF and she managed to get pregnant also. This algorithm or pathway for unexplained fertility is one of the excellent algorithms which shows that in women with over 39 years, irrespective of the duration of uh, uh, infertility, you can offer the patient two cycles of treatment with IUI, with FSH or uh, FSH alone. And if this was not successful, if this not, was not successful, you can go to IVF directly. If she is 35 uh, years to 39 years, you should wait for one year before offering this pathway. And if she's not pregnant within three cycles of stimulation, you uh, go to IVF. So the difference between 35 to 39 to more than, more than 39 is that you don't give a lot of time here or a lot of treatment, you just go directly to IVF. Whereas here you can offer one year. If the patient is less than 35 years, she should fulfill the criteria of two years. So if she is less than two years, you should complete expectant management up to two years. Then you can offer uh, stimulations or IUI. And if they failed within three to six cycles, you can go to IVF. If the patient is more than two years uh, duration, you go directly to uh, stimulation and if unsuccessful, you don't have expected management here, of course, and you go directly to IVF uh, to stimulation and if not successful to IVF. So age is important in choosing the pathway for management of unexplained infertility. If it is less than 35, it is 35 to 39 or more than 39, keeping in mind to choose properly for expectant uh, management. So diagnostic evaluation for infertility should include a comprehensive history and physical examination. Diagnostic uh, evaluation of infertile females should be accompanied by evaluation, of course, of male partner. Uh, and women under the age of 35 should seek infertility evaluation if they have not conceived after one year of unprotected intercourse. And women over the age of 35 should seek infertility evaluation if they have not conceived after six months of unprotected intercourse. And a woman should seek diagnostic evaluation of infertility immediately if she has a medical history significant for oreomonorrhea, aminorrhea, advanced stage endometriosis, or any other uh, condition. And diagnostic evaluation for infertility should include assessment of ovulatory function, structure, and patency of the reproductive tract and semen analysis to diagnose unexplained infertility. Ovarian reserve testing should not be performed routinely, and routine laparoscopy should not be performed in women with unexplained infertility, and postcoital test and endometrial biopsy should not be performed as part of the routine evaluation of these patients. And thank you very much for accommodating me. And thank